The following KQED production was produced in high definition. The California Academy of Sciences new building has come to life in Golden Gate Park. We're joined this week by Spencer Michaels, who's taking a break from his job covering hard-hitting stories for the NewsHour with Jim Lehrer to get an inside peek at how the new Cal Academy is shaping up. For most of us, taking a dip with a huddle of penguins or wrangling cranky moray eels would be pretty unusual. But for the biologists at the Cal Academy, this is just another day at the office. To prepare for the reopening, the folks at the Cal Academy are carefully moving more than 20 million scientific specimens and nearly 40,000 live animals from their temporary facility in downtown San Francisco to the new building in Golden Gate Park. The process is delicate, but it's worth the care. When complete, these animals will be part of a living legacy that began 150 years ago. The California Academy of Sciences is the oldest scientific institution uh, west of the Mississippi. And it was founded uh, during the gold rush by a bunch of wealthy San Franciscans to sort of serve as a Smithsonian of the West Coast. Uh, it was only in the 1890s that the original academy, which was pure science, decided to build a museum because the feeling was if we don't tell the public what it is we're doing, which was collecting things and analyzing them, we won't get any public support. So the public museum part of it is an afterthought. The old museum in Golden Gate Park stood for nearly a century, helping teach generations of school children and other visitors about the natural world. But in 1989, the building was hit hard by the Loma Prieta earthquake and needed to be replaced from the ground up. We had a blank slate. We could start over from scratch, create every exhibit new. And that was a chance to redefine what a natural history museum could be in the 21st century. The new four-acre palace, funded by private donations and bonds approved by San Francisco voters, cost nearly half a billion dollars. It is home to a redesigned aquarium, planetarium, natural history museum, and living rainforest that all follow the ecological mission of the Academy. It was very important to us as we started this building process to build a museum that was as green as possible. Our mission is to explore, explain, and protect the natural world, and protecting the natural world means creating a lighter footprint. And for us, that meant everything from planting a living roof with 1.7 million native California plants to piping in aquarium water directly from Ocean Beach so that we're not using potable water to run the saltwater aquarium. It's a sleek, energy-efficient green building intended to inspire. The exterior draws on the beauty of the park while the interior transports visitors across the globe. Well, you're in the, uh, the rainforest exhibit. It's the rainforest of the world exhibit. So behind me is a full height, 60 foot tall tropical rainforest with an Amazon pool. And into here we'll release butterflies and birds as we get closer to the opening. And then as you explore this exhibit, you'll actually explore rainforests of the world. So you'll visit Borneo, Madagascar, Costa Rica, and then eventually descend in an elevator through the exhibit and explore the Amazon. So it's a real tour of rainforests of the world. As exotic as that sounds, native San Franciscans like me are sure to feel a familiar connection to this building. Not only does the living roof mimic Twin Peaks and the hills of the city, but there are also some beloved remnants from the old building we knew so well. You know, when I look at this place, it just brings back childhood memories because it looks just like it did in, in the 1940s and the 50s. Is it, was that the intent, nostalgia? It was, I mean, we, we knew we were creating this very new landmark building with a very different kind of academy, but we knew that the old academy was held in such, such high regard, especially by local San Franciscans. So we wanted to bring back three elements. So the pendulum is coming back, the swamp is coming back, complete with the gators and so on, and then Africa Hall is coming back, in a way, faithfully reproduced but also enhanced. And of course, at the far end, a whole exhibit of live penguins. So this whole hall is gonna just be like it was before, but much more alive. 
Think of the museum as the front of the store, but the real work is happening back behind the counter. The Academy's field scientists are the true stars, working around the world to better understand and protect the vital ecological areas of the planet. There we go. The beauty of a place like this, and there are others like us around the world, museums with, with a real research background, is that our scientists are out in the field studying things all the time. This is one bag of ant. You can see the larva. Academy <laughs> entomologist Brian Fisher has traveled the globe finding, identifying, collecting, and naming ants. There are an estimated 22,000 ant species known to science, and Fisher and his team have discovered a thousand of them. I hate it when they get in my beard. You ready? Move this way a little more. Through his research, he's brought okay. back a half dozen exotic ant colonies that will now find a new home in the Cal Academy rainforest. While they may be the museum's smallest residents, the ants are one of the biggest attractions. There's the soldier. Look at that one right there. Now, if you pick that oh, up, look at that guy. if you pick that up, you are going to get, oh, I picked it up wrong, but that is, it's slicing my thumb right now. And it's going to, it's almost through my thumb. He's, he's biting into you now? Right, actually, he's cut through my thumb, and it'll start bleeding soon. Really? Well, you don't Look have to that. do that. Look at that. There it goes. Do you oh, want to hold it? No, I don't want to <laughs> hold him. Why are you so fascinated with ants? I mean, how do, how do they fit into our world? Well, most people encounter the ant in their kitchen, and they think, ah, oh, the bad ant. But actually, ants are wonderful, and they're really important in the ecosystem. In fact, if you tried to remove all the insects like an ant from a forest, the forest would collapse. Why? Well, the ants are like the glue that hold the forest together. They turn over more soil than earthworms. They have all these interactions. In fact, if you put all the ants together in one big pile at one end of the scale and put humans at the other, they'd weigh about the same. So why are you so excited that ants can jump? Well, actually, it was an undocumented. See, it's stinging me right here. You see that? Oh, it bites, you? and now it's sticking this uh, kind of potent venom into my fingertip. But You're kidding, right? Well, I have it's ten not, of them. It's not potent venom, is it? Oh, you try it. No, I don't want to try it. Ah. Potent venom. While they assure me the ants will be safely contained in their new home in the rainforest, I'm thinking I might be better off down in the aquarium with the toothy moray eels. Get in there, baby. These more eels are a little bit scary, aren't they? Especially with their teeth. Well, they are, they are built to be great predators. So what they do is, they, unlike us, they have a row of teeth that runs down their throat, which actually allows them to catch fish. And then as they grab them, it actually allows them to hold on to them and just keep them going down the throat. So once you're caught, you're not going to escape. And I suppose that's true for your hand as well, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're kind of careful when you that's, do. We're very careful whenever we handle them. The Academy isn't just fish tanks and ant farms. Its scientists strive to inspire the public about science and serve as an educational resource for those studying life on Earth. So much like a library, we send out up to 2,000 specimens a year to researchers all over the world who want to look at them, examine them. They're looking at evolutionary questions. Um, uh, the only way to know what it is to look at it, to hold it in your hand. What we hope will come out when people visit is our passion. Um, knowledge and facts and information are all very, very important. We're a scientific institution. We believe in those things, and we want to communicate those things to, to our guests. But fundamentally, what we want to do is convince people of our passion for the natural world and get people to share our passion for that little ant, that bird flying in the rainforest, that shark swimming in the lagoon, and be able to understand that these animals are special. And while we can, we should be understanding them more and doing what we can to save them for future generations. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org slash quest.